Chapter 18 In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in, for unto that day all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. And the children of Dan sent out of their family five men from their coast, men of valor, from Zorah and from Eshtaol, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go search the land, who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Michael, they lo Micah, they lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man the Levite, and they turned in thither and said unto him, Who brought thee hither? And what makest thou in this place? And what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Micah with me, and hath hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee of God, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace, before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. And the five men departed and came to Laish, and saw the people that were therein, how they dwelt careless after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure. And there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians, and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren of Zorah and Eshtaol, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? And they said, Arise, that we may go against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Be not slothful to go, and to enter, and to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure, and to a large land, for God hath given it into your hands a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. And there went from thence of the family of the Danites, out of Zorah and out of Eshtaol, six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up and pitched in kirjath Jerm in Judah, wherefore they called that place Mahanadan, Mahanadan unto this day. Behold, it is behind kirjath Jerm. And they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim, and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men who went to spy out the country of Laish, and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, and teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned thitherward, and came to the house of the young man the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were of the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in thither, and took the graven image, and the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. And the priests stood in the entering of the gate with the six hundred men that were appointed with weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image, the ephod, the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad, and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image, and went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed, and put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before them. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the houses near to Micah's house were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan, and they turned their faces and said unto Micah, What aileth thee that thou comest with such a company? And he said, You have taken away my gods, which I have made, and the priest, and ye are gone away, and what I have I more. And what is this that ye say unto me, What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee, and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household. And the children of Dan went their way, and when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back into his house. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priest which he had, and came to, unto Laish, unto a people that were at quiet and secure, and they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Zidon, and they had no business with any man, and it was in the valley that lieth by Bethrahab, Bethrahab, and they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel, howbeit the name of the city was Laish at first. 
And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan, the son of Jershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of captivity of the land. And they set up Micah's graven image, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. We have here an interesting story. Not a pleasant one, unfortunately. Uh, what happens is the tribe of Dan was living in the area that had been occupied by Judah because they had not been strong enough, not determined enough, not righteous enough to occupy all of their own terrain, the territory that was given to them. And so they were down with Judah, and they wanted some territory of their own, and they decided to send out five spies to find out where they should go. Five spies went up to the area where Ephraim was living and happened to run into Micah's house. And they knew the Levite, apparently, knew his voice, and they found out that he was the priest for them and uh, that things were looking pretty good. And then they did something which seems really incomprehensible to me. They asked the Levite to ask the Lord whether or not the place, the way they were going, was going to be prosperous. The Levite, knowing that he was hired, would also realize that if he was hired, then he didn't have the right to inspiration. But he basically told them to go ahead and do what they were doing and everything would work out fine. These guys go and they find a, a valley that's very beautiful, very rich, and there are people there who are living who are, so the best of our knowledge, idol worshippers, Baal and Ashtaroth, and, uh, but living carelessly. They're not military-minded. They're living at peace. They're living at harmony. They don't have anything to do with anybody else. They're not bothering anybody. And the tribe, these five spies say, wow, this would be a great place. If we just killed these people, we can have it. So they go back to the tribe of Dan. They bring back 600 armed men. They show up at Micah's place again and decide, even though they know that they're not supposed to, that they want the Levite and they want the graven images and the molten image, and they take them, and they head out. And Micah comes and is very upset because they've taken his, his uh, phony gods, and they've taken his Levite priest, and they basically tell him, uh, don't bother us, otherwise some angry guys may run you through with a sword. And so eventually they wound up uh, at the, the uh, tribe of Dan with 600 guys, wind up. Uh, in the valley, where these Zidonians are living, kill them all, burn the city, build a city of their own, decide to live there, and they set up the false gods to worship. And the last verse says, even though they knew that the house of the Lord was in Shiloh, they knew there was a tabernacle there. They knew that the Lord wanted them to worship there, but they didn't really care. How many times in our lives is that the way it is? We know the Lord wants us to do something, but we don't really care because it's inconvenient, because it isn't on our schedule, because it isn't going to make us any money. All of these things are here for us to learn from. And if we, we watch and we see what happens, we learn how depraved these people were, how degenerate these people were, how little they did of what they could have done. We don't want to be like them. We have to look in our own lives and determine whether or not we are doing anything even remotely close to being like that. And if we are, we need to change. 